teaching. Obviously, this is a pretty good pickup if that's what you're looking for, which they certainly are. So let's take a deeper look into the bench utility competition. And I really wanted to take this look again because we've added these new names. And we've done this a couple times so far, but the Braves are really changing it up with all these new names and all these new you know, places people can go. So the bullpen and the bench ha both had a lot of questions, right? We're going to talk about the bullpen in a second, but... The bench is the only part now that I think still has questions. I think we're pretty much set on what the bullpen's going to be, pending Shane Green or not Shane Green. We pretty much know what it's going to look like, right? The roster this year is capped at 26, and then they'll expand to 28 in September. So you, in theory, you got 13 pitchers, 13 position players, right? Your pitchers are going to be, obviously, Soroka, Freed, Ian Anderson, Morton, Smiley. Now, Soroka may not be there on opening day, but Ron Washington had an interview today with uh, Mad Dog on MLB Network, and he pretty much said he's betting on Soroka to be there on opening day. He's saying he wouldn't surprise if he's, he wouldn't be surprised if he's not there, but he's pretty much betting on him to be there. So we'll see if he's not there on opening day, he'll be there shortly after. But of course, in the pen, AJ Minter, Jacob Webb, Will Smith, Josh Tomlin, Grant Dayton, Tyler Matzik, Chris Martin, Waskari Noah. Those are all names you know. That is solely based on, you know, it's a mixture. Obviously, we know our starting rotation, you know, but the bullpen I just mentioned is solely based on what we saw last year. But there's a lot we don't know. There's a lot that I think that could be solved or competed over, rather, at spring training. So there's a lot we don't know. Um, I think this will be updated sooner rather than later. This is not even including names like Bryce Wilson, Kyle Wright, Patrick Weigel, Tucker Davidson, Tookie Toussaint, Philip Pfeiffer, Sean Newcomb, Kyle Muller, Luke Jackson, Jaseel De La Cruz, Chad Zabaka, and Victor Arano. Now, some of those names you're not going to see, right? Obviously, we don't have enough time to see all those guys. But you're going to see a couple of them, whether they get called up because somebody gets hurt, whether they get called up because somebody is unsuccessful, or whether or not they beat out somebody in spring training for the job. You're going to see one of those guys at some point. I think, you know, Grant Dayton is a guy that can – you know, that job could be taken by one of these young arms uh, that's adapting to the bullpen. I think that could certainly happen. Grant Dayton, you know, was all right in the pen last year, but he was not the shining star. I think there's no harm in saying that. But, you know, I, I think you could also compete in theory with Waskari Noah. I personally really like Waskari Noah. I think he's got gas, and I think he's got, you know, a lot of potential. But if he's not consistent, you know, he's going to lose that spot because they have so much depth in the pen. And that's what's, you know, the uncertainty in the pen. It, it's, you have a lot of options. It's not so much you don't have the talent. You, you certainly have talent within the Braves' bullpen. I think it's more so you have a lot of options and you don't really know who's who at the moment uh, in a lot of ways. But uh, there's plenty of room for improvement and plenty of room for shifting in the bullpen. So let's talk about the position players, right? This is your other 13, in theory. Ronald Acuna, Freddie Freeman, Marcelo Zuna, Travis Darno, Ozzy Albies, Austin Riley, Christian Pache, Dansby Swanson. With, you know, pending an injury, those guys aren't going anywhere. And I would throw in William Contreras or Alex Jackson, uh, whoever the Braves end up going with. I, I think they're obviously in there as a backup catcher. So, in theory, you got about four spots left. I think you throw in Johan Camargo. I think he's a definite. He's played really well in the Dominican League. I don't know how many of you guys check that out, but his team actually ended up winning what would be the World Series of the Dominican League. His team won it. Uh, I think Ender and Ciarte may start the season there, depending on what happens in spring training. They're paying him too much money to be in Gwinnett. That's just my opinion. Uh, William Contreras, like I mentioned. Jason Kipnis uh, and Jake Lamb, just be, based on what I know, based on you know history alone, that is what I'm looking at right now. What happens at spring training? What happens early on in the season? Who knows? But the, you know, at the moment, there's not as much moving around uh, with the names I just left off. Those being Abraham Almani, Jake, Jack Mayfield, Ehir Adri Adrianza, Travis Demare, and Alex Jackson. There's certainly room for competition, but it's not like the bullpen where we have a lot of uncertainty. We have a lot of, you know, just a lot of things that we don't for sure know. Uh, you know, the bullpen, you have a lot of options. The bench, not so much, and that's why you keep seeing names being added. I think the Braves are going to filter through these guys and see who's who's who, and I think it's going to happen rather quickly. So it's not near as uncertain as the bullpen, and I use uncertain very lightly there. The bullpen's not, uh, the bullpen is far from uncertain. I think it's more unsettled at this point. 
but I think there's still plenty of room for competition in both of those areas. So let's weigh it out. What are the pros and cons, right? I think we're all aware that the bullpen is not going to be what it was last year, to the elite level it was. Because, frankly, the bullpen last year was the best bullpen I've seen by the Braves in a very long time. Uh, it just was. Um, and especially compared to where they were in the years, in a couple of years prior. Um, but I also don't think they have to be that elite this year. Last year, we needed them. We needed them drastically. Now it's because they're starting pitching. It's all about weighing it out, right? The bullpen not being elite isn't that big of a deal to me considering the Braves are going to have a major upgrade in starting pitching. So I think the Braves aren't going to be too shabby out of the pen. Don't get me wrong. There's a lot of names there that could be more than successful. Uh, and if you add Shane Green, I, I think, you know, you're right there where you were last year. You know, of course you lost Melanson, but I really think the Braves are going to be fine just based on the young arms coming up. But I don't think that the pen, the pen needs to be that way because the starting rotation, you add guys in like Charlie Morton, a veteran starting pitcher, as probably your number four pitcher, right? Drew Smiley being your number five. Mike Soroka, Max Fried, Ian Anderson, no reason to think they're not going to be successful this year. Obviously, we've seen crazier things if they if they aren't successful. But I really think that the fact that you have that good of starting pitching and the fact that you have you know, your offense virtually the same, obviously it's going to be hard to repeat, but your offense is virtually the same. I think that there's you know a lot of untapped potential in that pen, and I think we're going to see some growing pains. But guys like Kyle Wright, guys like Bryce Wilson, to me, you know, keep in mind there's also Kyle Muller, Tucker Davidson, Patrick Weigel. Guys like that, you know, make me not so much worried about it. Uh, I was on the forefront on bringing back Shane Green, and I still am. If the Braves sign Shane, if the Braves sign Shane Green right now, I would be very happy about it. I like Shane Green. He's pretty much lights out. Very rarely does he, you know, have a bad night. Uh, and I'd still like to get him, but it's not make or break, you know, in, in the way that I originally thought it was. And it's also not make or break, you know, in the way that a lot of people still think it is. I think the Braves are going to be okay with or without him. But the longer time goes on with the Braves signing bench pieces, I really think their priority is elsewhere. It could happen. Don't get me wrong. You know, I would prefer it to happen. But I really think that the Braves' priority is on the bench. And, you know, I don't see a problem with that considering what I just told you. The Braves are starting to bank on those young arms. You know, two years ago, when the Braves went out and got Chris Martin, Shane Green, Mark Melanson, the young arms were far from ready. I think we're starting to see some some difference. You know, some, you know, I know Kyle Wright had a bad night, you know, in the postseason last year, but Bryce Wilson had a pretty good one. You know, and I really think that the Braves are going to start relying on those guys to have good nights. So, I really think that the bench needed the most attention, not the bullpen. You know, let's be honest. You know, you lose Charlie Culberson, who's a Swiss Army knife, can play anywhere. You know, in Mr. Consistency, Nick Markakis, you lose those two guys, you know, they're, at least Markakis is yet to be re-signed. You had to replace them, and that's a hard thing to do, you know, especially for the price. But you're also not going to have a DH, so somebody reliable has got to be there to hit for the pitcher, to, you know, to be there in a time of need. So I wanted Adam Duvall to return as much as the next guy, but it didn't happen, so we got to move on. I think that the moves that were made were, were quietly really good. Jake Lamb could surface to be a good hitter again. Uh, he doesn't have to be a great hitter, but he could be a, an effective hitter. Travis Demir, I think there's plenty of reason to have high hopes for him, uh, for a major league call-up possibly, and if not this year, maybe next. And there's nothing wrong with having depth like I mentioned earlier. But I think that the Braves have not diminished. They've reallocated elsewhere. Instead of having an elite pin, they have a good one. But instead of having uninhabited spots in the starting rotation, you have a well-built staff. So you have to reallocate. You have to fix, you know, it's it, it's more of a whole team now. It's not so much that the bullpen's really good, starting pitching's really struggling, and the offense is on fire. It's not that. You have a full team, and I really hope you see my point. So let's talk about starting pitching. Charlie Morton, 